Hey there everybody, welcome to your Tech Timeline for September 15th, 2013. Now this of course is the show where I serve up everything in the world of tech and gaming that you might have missed throughout the week. Now Sunday we saw McDonald's launch Mobile Payments. This is a pilot service that they're testing out in a few choice locations. And while at it's on its own it might not seem like the most important story, it is actually very interesting and it's definitely something that we should keep an eye on. Now this is a new service that would allow customers to order and pay for meals from a mobile device. Now any story that has the further integration of technology into our everyday lives is something that I especially pay attention to. Because I think that this kind of technology, while as I said on its own might not be wholly revolutionary, when coupled with stuff like NFC or even Apple's new thumbprint verification system, I really think that that's going to bring us into a future where we can buy goods and services in a whole new revolutionized way. And it's really going to help us achieve a seamless retail experience. Now, this is something that might not be the most important story of the week, but it is something that I think can lead to some very large advancements in how we purchase goods and services. Now, McDonald's is not the biggest leader across the world of piloting new projects, but I will say that they are very economically sound and that a lot of business kind of businesses kind of look towards McDonald's, not even in the fast food industry, a lot of businesses in general kind of look towards McDonald's as kind of a litmus test for different things that they might want to pilot and try out on their own. So if McDonald's deems this to be an applicable thing that they find profitable and deem easy to implement, then it's very possible that we'll see all sorts of different businesses kind of picking up on this and even broadening the spectrum even more. And that's really what I think we should focus on. This story, I think, has the potential to really grow and change our lives in an everyday, very integral part and integral way. And I think it's something that we definitely should keep an eye on. Now, that being said, McDonald's is piloting the project, which means that they could shut it down at any point. And unfortunately, I think that that could deliver kind of a large blow to these kind of advancements in the future. So hopefully, lots of luck to them. Uh, this service is going to work out very well. On Monday, House of Cards changed the television landscape, some would say, by winning a technical Emmy award. Now, these are the first Emmys for Netflix. And it's kind of the first big sign of platform crossover because the Emmys, of course, are usually reserved for traditional television. Now, I personally believe that the traditional television paradigm is outdated and is kind of being overshadowed and overtaken anymore by digital distribution. And I think a lot of companies in the telev television medium are kind of seeing the same thing. Thankfully, though, I think this is a good thing. I think this kind of forward advancement is really going to change the way that we watch things and the way that we experience different mediums. A lot of people are tired with the old way of doing things where you have to buy huge bloated cable packages for just a few select shows that you actually enjoy. Many more people enjoy the Netflix or Hulu aspect and way of doing things where they come out with original programming in short bursts and kind of buck the trends that these big networks have. Now, on a personal note, I don't really like the way big networks handle, you know, the media in general. And I think that things like YouTube and Netflix and Hulu are actually a lot better for us as consumers. Now, of course, Netflix and Hulu has a lot of aspects to it or have a lot of aspects to them both that are very similar to the corporate suits and the television medium. They, of course, have investors and people that want to see the business just have a successful bottom line. But at the same time, I think that this will hopefully create a greater market for independent content that operates outside the norm, such as your YouTube content and stuff like that. I think that hopefully this kind of mainstream attention towards non-traditional medium and ways of you know getting different programming out to the masses will kind of change market opinion and make it a much more profitable endeavor. And then hopefully a lot more people that aren't kind of held to the same 
standards, I guess, and uh, practices, I think I want to say, of the television community can kind of break out and get more mainstream access. And that'll really bring a wider range of information and programming to the end user. So I think that that's a very interesting story, and I think it's something that I'm going to want to look at in the future and try and keep up with. Now, Tuesday, we saw Fede Alvarez, the director of the arguably terrible Evil Dead remake, might be bringing us a live-action Dante's Inferno. Now, this, of course, of course, is an adaptation of the game, which was loosely based on the original opener of the Divine Comedy. Now, this might sound pretentious on my part, but the Divine Comedy is one of my favorite literary works of all time. We were forced in high school to read the second book, Purgatorio, and I just took to it. I really liked the imagery, I liked the story premise on the whole, and so I took it upon myself to read the first and third books, which of course would be Inferno and Paradiso, Paradiso being one of the most difficult things to read ever, uh, and I struggled through both those, and I really enjoyed it overall, but I could see that there was kind of a disconnect between modern culture and kind of the old world writing that it's in. I think that the structure of it and the story behind it is timeless. I think that it's really well done, and personally, I didn't really have a problem with the way it was written, understanding it was difficult many times, but I didn't have like an actual problem, like it made me upset that it was written that way. But uh, since then, I've always been really hyped and really excited for anything that kind of saw an advancement or a retelling of the base story, because I think the through lines in that story are really, really good. So I do have to say that I really enjoyed the game. I think, I think it was a good adaptation. Obviously, it took some liberties here and there where it had to, because it was a game. So I guess they could have kind of bucked certain tropes, but when dealing with uh, story content that is unfamiliar to so many people, I think that they kind of felt that pushing in some of those tropes into the story would make it more relatable, which is understandable. But I think the through line for the game was actually pretty similar to the original source material, and I enjoyed it quite a bit. That being said, I just cannot get hyped for this new movie. I just don't think, God help me, that it's going to be very good. From what I've read and what I understand, I think that it's going to be a strict adaptation of just the video game material and kind of ignore the source material. So that's kind of twice removed. And I think that that's going to be a big disconnect. I also wasn't a huge fan of the Evil Dead remake. I enjoyed the first one more than I should, probably. Uh, so I think that just that is kind of let me down as well. I think that taking source material that I care so much about and removing it so far from it and putting it in the hands of someone who's already kind of let me down once before is making me very skeptical. But still, hopefully, I would love to be wrong about this because a live action uh, Dante's Inferno would be excellent, in my opinion, if it was done correctly. I just think that kind of putting it in a Hollywood type of, which generally kind of bastardizes source material anyway, just for the purpose of doing it in some cases, I think it's just a very dangerous proposition. And of course, there was a large outcry when the game came out from people who I don't think have ever picked up a controller before that were angry it existed. So I imagine that the uh, same kind of people that just like being angry, these literary purists, uh, will be angry about this adaptation as well. So hopefully it doesn't run into any problems. Hopefully I'm wrong. Wednesday, Sony finally officially spills the beans around Gaikai a little bit. There's really not much to report on for this particular story, um, but there there is a little bit. It's just not as much as I would have wanted. Now, we still don't know the specific specifics of price or content, but the idea behind this is just so enthralling that I had to talk about it. Now, Gaikai will officially support PS3 games streaming, and this is kind of game-changing for me. It's really exciting. It's one of the things I just picked up a Vita, actually, and this whole Gaikai proposition kept me from getting, like, PS1 classics and stuff on there, which is fun. It's fun to, like, have a mobile and everything, uh, because I didn't know. I was worried that, you know, come two or three days later, this whole Gaikai thing would explode, and I would find out that I would be able to just have that streaming service and that, you know, the down payment that I made for those games would be kind of wasted. 
And thankfully, they've announced that the service will be available across the PS4, the Vita, and the sexy new Vita TV. It's coming out in 2014, but they didn't even give us like those sketchy indicators like early or late. So I am basically am reporting on nothing. But if Gaikai works the way I hope it will, it will totally revolutionize the gaming space. I think it's amazing to think that we've come so far from the old NES cartridges that I used to play as a kid to streaming such massive, beautiful games just straight into handheld consoles. I think it's really insane, and I can't wait to hear more about Gaikai in the future. Uh, I just wish that they had let me know a little bit more about it when they released that information earlier. Speaking of old classic gaming, Thursday saw a very sad story where Hiroshi Yamauchi passed away at the age of 85. Now, better people than me have written extremely meaningful posts about this great man's passing. Still, though, I felt that I needed to make mention of it just the same. Yamauchi was head of Nintendo through what many would consider was its golden age. And he was a great man, and he led an extremely fascinating life, so I implore you to seek out one of those articles. I've uh, contained a link down in the description to one of the best ones that I've found from the Gameological Society uh, that really delves into who he was and kind of what he did. He played a major role in a lot of our lives, and I don't think in any small part he affected all of us being here involved in this video right now. I'm not sure that I would have been as big of a gamer if he hadn't done what he did for the industry. And if I wasn't a gamer, I don't think that I'd be making this channel and this content for you right now. So I think in no small part, he really changed a lot of our lives, a lot of our generation's lives. And he needs to be respected and remembered as highly as we can. I always kind of thought of him as uh, the Candyman from Willy Wonka. He wasn't exactly the guy in the factory coming up with the crazy ideas for, you know, mushroom-eating plumbers, but he was the man running the business, making sure that it was delivered to everyone and doing his best to make sure that each and every one of us got those products. Now, maybe that analogy falls apart, but still, it means a lot to me, and I think that everyone should read at least one article about him and just kind of think and ruminate on the effects that he's had in your life. Mine, personally, I know it was a big one. Friday saw John Noble, star of Fringe, if you've seen Fringe, in, in many shows, other than that, movies as well, that I have enjoyed, set to join the cast of Fox's Sleepy Hollow in a major recurring role, thereby forcing me to watch what I believe will be an extremely terrible show. I love John Noble. I want to support him. And so I have to at least check this show out. But from everything I've seen from the trailers and everything, it just hasn't grabbed me. It's just not seemed like that good of a show. Headless Horseman, I mean, I guess I like the Ichabod Crane mythos and the story a little bit. I like John Noble, but like if he's like the scenes he's not in, I think I'll just be sad for. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you guys have seen this show and you can tell me, you can bolster me and say, Josh, it's great, it's amazing. If it is, please let me know down in the comments. Just be like, hey, don't worry about it. It's going to be okay. And if that story wasn't tech or gaming related enough for you, then I guess alternately, Apple said they sold some phones or something. I I don't know. It, they used quantifiers that don't actually say numbers or anything. They were just like, we sold a buttload. So there you go, tech story. Moving on. Saturday saw some more bad news for BlackBerry, which isn't really a surprise since that company seems to be able to do no right lately, unfortunately. I love competition in the marketplace, and I've wanted to report on BlackBerry a couple other times in the past, but its slow, shambling crawl towards death has made me kind of depressed. I'd like to say that my first smartphone was actually a BlackBerry. I liked the QWERTY keyboard. Uh, I liked the fact that I had to pull the battery out literally four times a day. I mean, it was, it was a great phone. It got emails. Oh, fancy. But... Since that point, I think the BlackBerry has kind of come to crossroads time and time again that it hasn't been able to pick the right path on. Now this information, this news, is coming hot on the heels of an announcement that BlackBerry will be cutting 40% of, it of its workforce. BlackBerry is pulling 
it's highly anticipated messenger. I don't know why I, I just felt the need to do that. It's highly anticipated messenger app after less than a day of being available on iOS. And they have halted production of the Android equivalent. BlackBerry has gone ahead and cited several numerous problems as the cause. A flood of unlicensed copies of the app hit the Play Store, the Android Google Play Store, right before their release, or well before their release. I don't know how far along they were exactly on the Android version. So they were trying to deal with that, and they were delaying that a little bit as a result. But as well, an overwhelming server surge happened from an early build being leaked to the public while they were trying to deal with all these extra copies on the Play Store. So I don't know if it was they weren't really able to pay attention to everything or all aspects of it, but this leaked version got out. A bunch of people on Android devices scooped that up and just bombarded the server with, I believe, like 1.1 million people, which was well more than they thought that they would have. Obviously, it was, and the servers weren't prepared for it, so it basically crashed everything. They had to pull it out. And so BlackBerry is left in this kind of limbo where they're trying to deal, put out all these different fires just to get this service out, which is really sad because BlackBerry has been talking in the past, going back and forth about maybe going into just the services software standpoint of it and kind of backing off or getting away from selling hardware. And if your first major software launch is so fraught with like these kind of problems, I think that a lot of people are going to shy away from even that aspect of BlackBerry, which is a kind of terrible thing because I liked kind of that extra spice in the market. And that's the close for the week, a sad note with that BlackBerry, but I think that overall this uh, information that happened this week and a lot of the stuff that's coming out is pretty revolutionary stuff. I mean, Netflix, Gaikai, all this kind of stuff is stuff that I'm really excited about and hopefully we'll see more of it moving forward. Speaking of moving forward, if you have any tips for news stories that you would like to see covered in the coming weeks, be sure to hit me up anywhere you can. That'd be Twitter, that would be in the descri or in the comments for this video, and private messages on any platform that you choose. I absolutely love hearing from you guys, and if you have any tips for stories, I would love those as well. Also, I just want to let you know that it would really help me out if you could share this video. I don't ask this a lot on my channel, but these videos are very near and dear to my heart, and it's a new thing I'm trying to do with branching out content. So if you think you know anyone, a crazy uncle, a weird cousin, that might like this video, or at least a section of this video, please, please, please send them the link if you could. I would really, really appreciate that. I'd also like to say that the links to all of the sources for all these articles are down in the descri description. So if you want any more information on any of the stories I covered this week, be sure to click on through and read those great articles because I assure you they are fantastic. But even if you don't do any of that, I want to thank you guys for checking out this particular episode. I also want to say that I'm sorry that I was gone for a couple of weeks. I was very sick. And uh, since it was a soft launch of this show, I wanted to kind of give myself space to feel a little bit better before I shot another one. But I promise you that once we start the new, you know, site-wide kind of channel-wide relaunch, I will not miss a week. I will do my utmost best to make sure that I bring you your tech and gaming news every single week. I promise you. And thank you for understanding me being away for a little while. I really appreciate that as well. Anyway... After all that, I want to thank you one more time for watching this particular episode. So thank you ever so much, and I will see you in the future.